In this lesson, we are going to revisit range and outliers. Specifically, we're going to work on finding the interquartile range. Our goal is to find the interquartile range of data sets and describe how spread out the data are. So, how do I find the interquartile range? Well, let's look at an example and we'll review. If you need to review your vocabulary and range and outliers, go to the previous lesson and revisit that. So let's look at an example. Summer reading. Samantha is keeping track of how many books she and her friends have read over the summer. The numbers of books are 10, 25, 32, 18, 21, 14, 23, 32, and 26. Find the range and interquartile range of the data. So let's look at some key information. First, let's number the orders from least to greatest. So we have our smallest number that any of the kids read is 10. And so that's what's remember known as our lower extreme. And then our largest number that I'm finding is 32. That would be our upper extreme. And then we can list all the numbers from least to greatest. I'll go ahead and type those out for you. Okay, so now we have all nine numbers labeled from least to greatest. So we have here our lower extreme and our upper extreme. Now let's find the median or the middle number. So of course I'm going to start with my two on the outside and I have to go in to the center. If there's two in the center then I find, then I add them and divide by two or I average them. But in this case I only have one in the center. So here I have my median. So now I can revisit the same data without that median. So I've recopied it for you. And I have this area here, which is my lower quartile. In other words, I'm looking at the bottom half of the numbers. This is my upper half, and I'm going to find my upper quartile. The lower quartile is the middle of your lower quartile, quartile, or the median of the lower quartile, and your upper quartile is the median of your upper half set of data. So, let's find those numbers. In this case, we don't have one number in the middle. Remember, we're excluding that median that we had before but I'm not excluding the extremes. So in this case, of course, I have two numbers in the middle. So that's my lower quartile. Now I have to find the middle of 14 and 18. Well, 14 plus 18 is 32, and then I just divide that by 2 to get 16. So my lower quartile is 16. Now looking at my upper quartile, and again I have 2 in the middle, so I'm going to add 26 plus 32, which is 58, and I'm going to divide that by 2, is going to be 29. So now I have all my data identified. Now to find the range, I subtract the extremes, 32 and 10. So 32 minus 10 is 22. My range is 22. Whereas my interquartile range, I'm going to abbreviate that, interquartile range, I'm going to label that IQR, because that's how your book describes it too, is the difference between your upper extreme and your lower extremes. So that is 29 minus 16, or 13 in this case. So my range is 22, my interquartile range is 13. Sometimes students get range and interquartile range confused. So it is important that you remember 
The range is your upper extreme subtracted with your lower extreme and the interquartile range is your upper quartile which is the median of your upper half of numbers subtracted with your lower quartile or the median of your lower half of data. So I hope this helps you out. Now it's your turn. Find the range and interquartile range of the following test scores. So you have numbers 82, 94, 86, 76, 96, 43, 92, 80, 79, 95, 88, 98, 187. Go ahead and take a minute to pause the tutorial and to figure out the lower extreme, median, upper extreme, and then you're going to subtract those extremes to find your range. Then you need to split this into quartiles using the lower and upper halves of data. To find the interquartile range, remember you subtract the upper quartile and the lower quartile. If you need more help, remember to go back to the previous tutorials on range and outliers to help you out some more. In this lesson, we've revisited range and outliers. We have specifically focused on finding the range and interquartile range of data. This, of course, is the type of data that we would commonly use when creating box and whisker plots. This lesson will help you look for patterns and identify outliers as well. Another great job today.